Hello YouTube and welcome to my first tutorial on here. If you've been following my Instagram account for a while now, then you know I do a lot of cinema graphs. And if you've ever wondered how I make those cinema graphs, then this tutorial is for you. I'm going to show you step by step how exactly to make a cinema graph. So let's dive right in. The first thing you need is about a seven second video clip. It can be anywhere from six to 10 seconds, but I usually just shoot seven seconds. So for this example, I've got Soul Duck Falls. It was shot on a tripod. You definitely need to shoot your footage on a tripod to get nice, stable footage. So we're gonna start by dragging the clip into Photoshop. Now on mine, I've already got the timeline view checked. If you don't see this blue bar here at the bottom, you need to go up to Window and hit Timeline. Now I've got the single layer here in a group. I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup it and just go ahead and delete that video grouping. Now I've got my seven second clip here. I'm gonna shorten the clip down to about three seconds. That works really well for a cinema graph. And you wanna make sure to get rid of at least a second or two off of the beginning of the footage. That's the most important part. And you can change how zoomed in your timeline view is by this little slider here. And you wanna end up with about a three second clip. So there's about three seconds. I'm gonna drag the footage to the beginning of the timeline. So now I've got my three second video clip here at the beginning of the timeline. So now you need to duplicate your layer or copy and paste it, copy, paste. So now I've got two identical layers. I'm gonna drag the bottom layer. So the beginning of the bottom layer lines up with the end of the top layer, like so. And then you're gonna to want to drag the beginning of the bottom layer for about a second or so like that, and that's gonna be the part where you get your repetition. And then you're gonna drag the end of the bottom layer to line up with the end of the top layer. So now this clip is the same as if you were to have an extra second at the beginning of the top layer. Once you've done that, you're com you'll come over here and you'll click this little arrow by uh, the top layer to show the position, opacity, style, and you'll need to drag the slider here to the beginning of the bottom layer. It doesn't have to be the exact beginning. This is basically just going to be where you put in a keyframe to start the opacity change of the top layer. So that's what we're gonna do now. Once you've moved this slider, you come over and hit this little uh, stopwatch thing next to opacity, and that puts in a keyframe here. And our opacity of the top layer is at 100% at that keyframe. So now you're gonna drag your slider to the end of your clip and you're going to hit the keyframe next to opacity. And then you're gonna come over here and change the opacity to 0%. So basically what that's doing is from this first key keyframe, it's at 100% and now it's at 0% at this last keyframe. All the while this bottom layer is at 100%, meaning that by the end, this bottom layer is the only thing you're seeing, which loops directly into the top layer here. So now that we've done this, you can go ahead and play it if your computer will do it. And you'll see that it loops nicely like that. Don't mind the waterfall audio there. It's really annoying. But to fix the audio, we might as well do that now. You can right click on either layer here in the timeline and click on the music here. And what you'll wanna do with waterfalls or something where you have static noise like that is you'll wanna set the bottom layer opacity of the audio to zero. So we got zero volume on the bottom layer and then the top layer you can set to whatever your volume level you want. Um, and then you can also put a little fade in and fade out. I find that that just helps a little bit with the repetition so it's not just a hard cut. So I've done that, we can go ahead and play it and you can hear the difference a little bit maybe. Um, you'll notice it for sure in the final product. Now that we've done that, we basically have a cinema graph. But what makes cinema graphs really unique is that part of the image appears frozen while other parts are moving. So for this image, we definitely want the water moving here, but then we, all, we want these plants and the person to be completely still. Really makes it have that unique cinema graph look. So for that, we're gonna to need to create an image layer. And to do that on a Mac, you just press Command, Shift, Alt, E, and that makes a new layer from whatever was visible in that current view. 
So I've got this, and you're going to want to make it equal to your video layers here. So it's just over three seconds as well. So now if I hit play, nothing's going to happen. Now what we can do is add a layer mask to that image, and we can paint in the parts that we want to move. So you want to make sure you have a black brush, and if you do it at 100%, it will show through fully to the video layer. So for this, I'm going to paint in just the parts where I want to show motion. Now, ideally, you wouldn't have plants in front of your moving part, but in this case, I do, so I'm just going to have to deal with that. But I don't think they move too much. So 100% shows complete motion, but if you want just to show like a little bit of motion, you can always change the opacity and use that on your brush as well. So like here, I've got a little bit of mist coming up, so I'm gonna wanna show that a little bit, but not too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So now if I press play, you can see the water's moving, but the plants and everything on the side are completely still. And once we've done that, you pretty much have a cinemagraph. The only thing left to do is put any edits you want on top of your video file here. And you can use whatever layers in Photoshop you want, similar to what you would use on an image edit. So for this, I'm gonna start with a curves layer. And again, you wanna make sure it's the exact timeline as the video file below. So on my curves layer, I like to play around with the RGB channels just to help with the contrast as well as the overall tone of the image. So there you can see the before and the after, although that's a little bit blue. I'm gonna bring that back down. So before, after, and you can change the opacity on any la edit layers that you do, um, just like you would when editing a photo. I'm gonna go ahead and do another curves layer, this time specifically for the brightness of the image. And with the uh, edit layers like curves or brightness contrast, you can also mask out certain parts of that, um, just like you would for a photo. So say I do a brightness contrast, say I want to brighten the edges and add a little contrast to them, I can do that. And if I press Command I, that inverts the mask, you can see it's black. So now that um, edit layer isn't visible, but I can go ahead and paint white in the parts I want in whatever opacity I want. And there you can see the difference that made, brightening it up a bit. The other thing you can do with edits is say you use a plugin like Nick Software or something like that and you wanted to add in a photo edit from a freeze frame of the video, you could easily do that. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you an example of that in um, Nick Software. I'm gonna add an edit layer and this is creating a new layer that's an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and mask out um, certain parts of it that I want moving just like I did before, but I'm gonna show you a shortcut on how to do that effectively. So as you can see, I've got the new layer that's created down here, and I need to make that line up with the timeline of the entire image. And as you can see, that is just a photo layer. Now we need to mask out the parts that we want to move, but instead of just creating a layer like that, I am going to come down here to the other um, layer that I already masked out, and I'm going to right click on that and add mask to selection. Now that I've added the mask to selection, I'm gonna come over here to the top layer, the new uh, edit layer that I did, and I'm just going to add mask. And that's going to mask out the certain area to get the motion showing below. And it's the exact same mask as the other layer. It's a nice little shortcut if you do uh, edits like that. And again, I can change the opacity on that if I want. Now I'm just gonna put in any final edits I wanna do. Uh, maybe just tweak the curves a little bit more. And you can mess with the color balance and maybe a brightness contrast on here. You can also uh, add a U saturation layer and I can adjust say the greens if I want. Uh, make them a little bit less yellow and a little bit less saturated, kind of get that moody forest look. Um, and again, I can adjust with curves or whatever I want, and I can mask out the parts that I don't want to be affected by that. So that brightened up the waterfall a little bit too much. I'm going to go ahead and darken that. 
again, as well as the guy up here. You can see the before and the after on that. So now I've got what I think is a pretty good edit, and now we can put the final touches onto our cinemagraph. One of the interesting things about cinemagraphs is when you've got a really sharp image um, as well as the motion. So for this, I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen the outside of the image, the part that's not moving. So to do that, you can add a sharpening layer however you like to do it in Photoshop, whether it's with a plugin or using um, filter, sharpen, unsharp mask is a good way. Um, for this one, I'm gonna just go ahead and add a sharpening layer. And again, you gotta make sure that layer lines up with everything that's below it. So just over three seconds there. And that is a freeze frame capture of the entire video. So it's not going to show motion and you can change the opacity. You don't wanna over sharpen it. Nice little bit of sharpening there adds a lot to it. And again, you're gonna to need to mask out the water part, but you can go to the previous mask that you created and add mask to selection and then go back up to your sharpening layer and go ahead and add a mask to that and that will mask out the same part as before to show the motion but keep the sharpening around the rest of the image. So now we've got a sharpened cinemagraph ready to go. We just need to crop and export. If you're exporting for Instagram, you're gonna look at an eight by 10 crop. So for that, I'm gonna go here and this is what my eight by 10 crop looks like. Now I'd like it to show a little bit more of the trees at the top, especially and not lose it. So what you can do with some cinemagraphs is you can stretch the left or the right side of the image. So for this, I'm gonna try and stretch the right side of the image and the left side of the image just to um, improve my crop ratio and show a little bit more of the trees or below the waterfall. You can only stretch parts that aren't moving. So you can't stretch like the waterfall here, but I can certainly stretch a little bit there and uh, a bit more over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that crop. So in order to stretch the two sides of the image, I need to increase the canvas size. So I'm gonna go up here to image canvas size and set the width to just something greater than what it was before. So now I've got this. Now I need to create a new image layer on top. That's the part that I'm gonna stretch. So that's Command Shift Alt E on a Mac. And I need to make sure that new layer lines up with the rest of the file, just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stretch the left and the right side. Again, you don't wanna overlap with any part that's moving. So just to be safe, I'm just gonna do it a little bit on the side here. And I will do it on the other side as well. Once we've done that, we need to mask in the part that we can see here, the visible moving water. So again, we can use the mask that we did before, and mask to selection, and mask in. Now it did do the right and left side, which obviously we don't want, so we can go ahead and just paint those back in at 100% so that it's not masked out. And there you have it. We stretched the left and the right side just to give our cinemagraph a little bit more um, height when we go to crop it eight by 10. Now we're gonna go ahead and crop it. Eight by 10 works well for Instagram, just like that. And I always check my crops for one by one to see what they look like in grid view. I think that looks fine, so we'll go ahead and keep it. And there is our final cinemagraph. You can add any more adjustment layers you want on top. Like say I wanted to add another curves layer and maybe brighten up uh, the trees above the person on the bridge. I can go ahead and paint that in just like that. Uh, but maybe not the person there and you wanna make sure it lines up with everything below it. Just like that. So there is our final product in Photoshop. Now, the final step to get your cinemagraph ready to post is to export it. In order to do that, we just come up here to File, Export, Render Video. And usually it should pull the document size 
um, which is what you want. Uh, and then high quality, typically the settings are right there for you and you can name it whatever you want, save it. And it is exporting the video. It might take a minute, but it's a short video clip, so it shouldn't take too long to render. Now that that's rendered, we can go ahead and open up the file and check that it looks good. That looks good to me, so I think it's ready to post. Thanks for tuning in to this tutorial. I hope that helped you understand how to make cinemagraphs, and feel free to tag me in any cinemagraphs you make. I'd love to see them.